Now what we'll do is we'll look at one example machine question because a lot of the machine questions are similar. You'll find an additional example problems at the end of this presentation as well to help you understand these concepts more. The question we'll look at is this one right here, which is an example of pruning shears. We're told that they exert 15 pounds on the twig at E, and we're told to determine the force required, P, right here, in order to get that 15 pounds at this point here. What I'll do now is I'll switch to the handwritten solution and show you how to approach a problem like this. All right, now let's look at this machine problem, which really is just a frame problem in disguise. Robots in disguise, transformers. All right, so anyway, what we have here is we've got some pruning shears, ultra dangerous stuff. Don't put your finger in there. It'll cut your finger. And what we're told is the pruning shears exerted normal force of 15 pounds on the twig at point E. So we're cutting a twig, we're out doing some yard work. We're trying to figure out what's the required force P needed to apply this clamping force. And what we're going to do is try and calculate the mechanical advantage of the system. So the whole point of pruning shears is that ideally over here we might apply 5 pounds of force and on the outside the cutting force will be 15. Now the first thing I've gone ahead and done is I've tried to make this problem a little bit more clear by identifying how many components are in this machine. So it's a little bit hard to see but we've got four. We've got this bottom handle here which I've outlined in purple. I'll call this shape one. We've got this little nugget right here, which is actually called BC. And I've said that that's shape two, and I've outlined it in green. Shape three is this top handle, which actually comes down and becomes part of the bottom cutting surface. So this is point three. And point four is essentially this top cutting shear right here. So we have two ways that we could go about solving this problem. First step is we need to identify any two force members, which is what we do in pretty much every single frame and machine problem. So do we have any two force members? Again, I'll say them. Conditions can be pin pin and loads only at the pin. So let's look and find out if we've got any of these. Shape one, we've got pin pin A and B but we've got a force over here, so shape one is out. Shape two, little nugget BC. Well, if you look, it's pin pin, but it doesn't have any external loads. So, member BC is a two force member. Now keep going along and see if there are any others. But let's write this down first. Member BC is a two force member. All right, piece three, we've got a and D are the two pins holding this piece together, but we've got an external normal force where the twig is at, and we've got a force over here, P, so that's out of the question. That violates the second thing. And if we look at the top piece right here, we've got pin D and pin C. So it's pin pin, but got the twig. So that's out of the question. So essentially what we can do to solve this problem is one of two things. We know that we're gonna to need to use pieces that are connected to our two force member. So that tells us we either need to go to shape one or to shape four. Now let's look. Essentially what we know we need to do is we need to work from the fact that E has a 15 pound force at it. So we know stuff at E. What we're trying to figure out is P. So essentially we need to kind of work our way from here back to P or from P to point E. Well, if we look at the two things that have P on it, it's one or three. Now, one of the benefits of looking at shape one is that shape one is touching our two force member. So if we look at shape one, we can use the fact that this is a two force member to solve things fairly quickly. And then if you look, the two force member is also touching this top shear, which is actually touching E. So probably the best solution path for this problem is to go from shape one. We'll try and use this to solve for BC. And then what we'll do 
is we'll go to shape four. And once we go to shape four, we should be able to put P in terms of E. The other way that you could theoretically have done this is to look at shape one to shape three to shape four. But I'm gonna try and do it the simple way, which is gonna be one to four through our two force member at two. So let me draw the free better diagram of shape one and I'll draw the free better diagram of uh, shape four after we do that and we'll solve that. Let me pause the video for a moment. So essentially what I've done here is I've drawn the free better diagram of this bottom handle piece right here, which let me go back and label that is shape or component of our machine number one. So essentially what we have is we've got a pin at A, so that's AX and AY. We've also got point B, and because we said that BC was a two-force member, we'll draw BC, and we'll just assume it's going out at some angle. The only dimensions we really need to know at this particular point are the following. This 0 0.75 down here, this 4.75 over to here, from B to where the force P is being applied to the end. And if we look at the height difference between A and B, we can see that that is 0 0.5 inches, which I'll draw right here as well. Something you can see happens in frames problems is that the free body diagram gets fairly sophisticated. Now the question we have is what's this angle that B is at? From our picture we can see that B to C is 0 0.5 up and 0 0.5 wide, which if we use Pythagorean theorem, square root of 0 0.75 squared plus 0 0.5 squared here gets us approximately 0 0.9, which this triangle here is actually equivalent to a triangle that is a little bit neater and easier to say, which is going to be our 2, 3, root 13 triangle. So now what we need to do is we want to get BC. That's kind of our solution path. We're looking at piece 1 to get BC, and then we'll use that fact to then draw this little piece over here and get to E because we're trying to go from P to E. All right, so first thing we can do is we can sum up our moments about point A because that's a pin and has two things. By doing that, we'll be able to get BC in terms of P. So when we do that, we get some of the moments about A is equal to zero. So AX and AY don't matter. Now we're gonna have an X and a Y component of BC. So I'll just draw this two and this three over here just so I don't forget. So we're gonna have our X component about A is gonna go counterclockwise about B, for BC. So we've got plus three over root 13 BC times 0 0.5, which is our moment arm. So here's our force times distance. This is gonna go counterclockwise. Then we've got our X, our Y component of BC. Our Y component is also gonna go counterclockwise. So again, we have plus 2 over root 13 BC times a distance of 0 0.75. And then last but not least, we have P going up and around, also counterclockwise, times 4.75 plus 0.75, which is 5.5. So we have plus P times 5.5. Now something you can see that's happening already is that every single one of our things in our moment equation is counterclockwise. We know that that can't be true, so what's probably going to happen is that BC should have actually been going inward, meaning that BC is in compression. So when we do this, we get that PBC is equal to negative 6.610P. And we'll kind of hold on to this. We won't box it, we'll just circle it, which one could argue is basically the same thing, but we'll circle that answer. And now what we'll do is we'll go look at this piece right here, essentially EDC, and we'll figure out what's going on. So now what I've gone ahead and done is I've drawn a free body diagram of the top cutting shear, and we can see the following things. We've got 15 pounds coming up, which is the twig's normal force that we're applying, we're cutting. Now we're applying 15 pounds down on the twig, but the twig is pushing up onto the shears with 15 pounds, and that's why we have this here. We've got point D, which is holding everything together. 
It's one inch between point E and point D, and it's 1.5 inches between D and point B over here. This is where we have PBC applied at our 2, 3, root 13 triangle. And uh, we've got 0 0.5 inches from B to D vertically and 1.5 inches horizontally. We've also drawn our little X, Y axis. So pretty much our question was, what is the force P that we need to apply, sorry, what is the force P that we need to apply to get to the normal force E? So now we have PBC in terms of P, and we'll solve. Now something you can see that I've kind of done here is that here we had PBC was equal to negative 6.610P. I've gone ahead and just said, okay, because I hadn't drawn this free body diagram yet, I know that PBC is compression, which means that it's got to be pushing outward onto the nodes that it's touching. So PBC is fighting point B and it's pushing this way. So essentially, I'm just going to assume that PBC is positive 6.6 .6 in this free body diagram right here. So now what we do to solve is I can sum the moments about point D. I'll set this equal to zero. That gives us 15 times one, which is negative because it's clockwise. Now we have two components of BC. And if we look, the Y component is gonna be counterclockwise and the X component is also gonna be counterclockwise. So we have plus 6.61P from before times two over root 13, so we're doing the Y component first, times 1.5. And this would cause a counterclockwise moment. And then last but not least, we have plus 6.61P times three over root 13, times 0 0.5. This will also be counterclockwise. Essentially what this tells us is that 15 is equal to 5.5p plus 2.75p and that p is equal to 1.818 pounds. That is our final answer. The last thing that we needed to compute was the mechanical advantage of the system. Mechanical advantage, remember, is the output force over the input force. So in this particular case, our mechanical advantage is going to be we're outputting 15 pounds at the cutting face of the shear, and we're putting in 1.8 one eight pounds. Therefore, our mechanical advantage is eight point two five. So that's actually a pretty hefty mechanical advantage for such a small machine. But that's exactly why machines are very valuable, even when they're small like this, because we know that you can't just chop through a shear like or a twig like that on your own but being able to provide 1.8 pounds output 15 almost an order of magnitude increase in your output force and there you go that's how you do a machine question very similar to a frame identifying the two force members and kind of figuring out where you know the most things and where you're trying to go to solve there you go Well, there you go, everyone. Thank you for what, 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 what. Yeah. Oh man, this thing's broken again. These mic robots are pieces of junk. Let's see if I can fix it. Right here. Uh, open it up. All right, let's see what we got here. Um, all right, it's not that. Maybe. No. Uh, I'll tell you what. That's what you get when things are made in New Jersey. Piece of junk. Must kill all humans.